Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today you will learn about Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome on Ultrasound. Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome or PCOS is a hormonal disorder. It's characterized by hormonal imbalance, irregular menstrual cycles and the growth of small cysts on the ovaries. PCOS is diagnosed clinically. Ultrasound findings greatly help in diagnosis. The ultrasound findings must be clinically correlated. Patients with PCOS can present with acne, infertility, infrequent periods called oligomenorrhea or absence of periods, which is amenorrhea. On the left, we have the image of a normal ovary in transvaginal view. A normal ovary will have some hypoechoic follicles. The largest follicle is a mature follicle or dominant follicle. In the menstrual cycle, the dominant follicle is the one that has developed the most and is likely to ovulate. This is the ovarian stroma, the supportive tissue framework within the ovary that surrounds the follicles and other structures. It consists mainly of connective tissue, blood vessels, nerves, and cells such as fibroblasts and smooth muscle cells. The image on the right is of a polycystic ovary in a patient diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Numerous follicles are present inside the ovary. These follicles will be seen around the wall of the ovary. They will have a peripheral distribution. This appearance is called string of pearls appearance. These small follicles or cysts are typically immature and fail to develop into mature follicles capable of ovulation. As a result, they accumulate in the ovaries, giving rise to the characteristic appearance seen on ultrasound. The ovary will be enlarged as well, with ovarian volume exceeding 11 milliliters. However, this value can be different amongst different patients. This is another image showing a polycystic ovary. You can see various follicles all around the periphery, the string of pearls sign. Another feature you will find is that the central ovarian stroma will appear hyperechoic. The central stroma will appear more prominent because it is surrounded by anechoic or hypoechoic follicles. In this image, you can see the echogenic central stroma surrounded by hypoechoic follicles. The ovary was also enlarged. You can clearly see a difference in appearance between a normal ovary and a polycystic ovary on ultrasound. These are transabdominal images in transverse plane showing both the ovaries and the uterus in the middle. This is the bladder. You can see both the right and left ovaries in the image. The image on the right shows bilateral polycystic ovaries. Numerous anechoic follicles can be seen in a peripheral distribution. Both the ovaries are enlarged. You can compare this appearance with normal ovaries on the left side. This is a transabdominal longitudinal view of a normal ovary. We can see some follicles. The right side image shows an enlarged ovary with multiple follicles in a 
peripheral distribution. This is a transvaginal image of the normal ovary. The largest follicle is the dominant follicle. And this image shows a polycystic ovary with numerous peripherally distributed follicles with a hyperechoic central stroma. This is another image of a polycystic ovary. The central hyperechoic stroma is more prominent in this image. A string of pearls appearance can be seen. Now we will look at blood tests which are often advised to PCOS patients. Patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome are often advised to undergo blood tests to check their levels of luteinizing hormone LH and follicle stimulating hormone FSH because these hormones play a crucial role in regulating the menstrual cycle and ovulation. In PCOS, there is often an elevation in LH levels relative to FSH levels, disrupting the normal balance between these hormones. This imbalance can lead to irregular or absent ovulation, which is a hallmark of PCOS. Testosterone levels can also be checked. In women with PCOS, there can be an overproduction of testosterone. Testing for dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate is often recommended to assess adrenal gland function and to rule out other possible causes of symptoms. Elevated levels of DHEAS can indicate adrenal hyperactivity, which might contribute to the excess androgen levels observed in PCOS. Elevated levels of androstenedione, along with other androgens, can help confirm the presence of PCOS, especially when combined with other clinical symptoms and tests like ultrasound. Insulin resistance is a common feature of PCOS, so fasting insulin can be elevated in a patient with PCOS. In PCOS patients, abnormalities in lipid metabolism, particularly increased levels of LDL cholesterol and triglycerides, and decreased levels of HDL cholesterol, are frequently observed. Thyroid disorders such as hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism can have overlapping symptoms with PCOS, such as irregular menstrual cycles, weight changes, and fatigue. Therefore, it is important to rule out or detect thyroid dysfunction in PCOS patients to ensure proper management and treatment. PCOS shares symptoms with other endocrine disorders such as hyperprolactinemia, where there is an excess of prolactin in the blood. Elevated prolactin levels can disrupt the normal menstrual cycle and lead to irregular periods which are also common in PCOS. Checking prolactin levels helps rule out this condition or identify it if present alongside PCOS. Sex hormone binding globulin SHBG is the protein produced by the liver that binds to sex hormones including testosterone and estrogen in the bloodstream. In PCOS, there can be alterations in SHBG levels. Usually, their levels are lower in women with PCOS, which can contribute to higher levels of free testosterone. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe 
and stay tuned for more imaging videos.